Hello there everybody, welcome back to another episode of Try New Things. You can tell by the title of this video that it is going to be something completely different, well kind of completely different, than the content I normally have on this channel. But bear with me, it's all going to tie back to the channel in the end, so stay tuned throughout the entire video. Now in order for us to be able to understand fully bifurcated procrastination, we got to take a step back and look at classic procrastination. Now classic procrastination is the act of purposely delaying the successful completion of a task or desired outcome. Most of the time, classic procrastination is going to fall into one of two buckets. The first bucket, more often than not, is something that needs to be done and has a communicated deadline or timeline associated with it. So in my case, I honed my procrastination skills in university. Let's take for example, you're assigned a project and it's not due for another 10 days. Do you rush right back at the end of classes and start working on that project? Of course you don't. Now in your first year or second year when you're just learning the skills, you may wait until three days before it's due and then work on the project. But as your procrastination skills develop and blossom, you'll wait until the night before or even the morning of the due date to start working on that project. Now looking at my YouTube analytics, approximately 95% of all my video viewers are male and well over half of those are over the age of 50. So I'm going to assume that you guys are with me on this one, but the second bucket that procrastination falls into is anything your wife tells you or asks you to do. More often than not, we may be debating the legitimacy of the urgency expressed in the order that we're given from our better halves. Let me walk through an example with you. So let's just say, hypothetically, that your wife says, you've got to fix the toilet this weekend, it's not flushing properly. Now, in there is a clear direction given, and a stated timeline of the weekend. But in my mind, I'm doing a little bit of mental math and I'm thinking to myself, there are two people that live here and we have three toilets. I fail to see the urgency associated with the weekend deadline. Not sure if this is ringing true with anyone out there watching, but this is just an example of bucket two, where classic procrastination typically comes into play. Now at this point, I'm going to assume that many of you watching this video are experienced in the classic procrastination realm, either bucket one or bucket two. And you may be asking yourself, where does the bifurcated procrastination come into play and how is it any different? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to go into that right now. So think of it this way. Bifurcated procrastination fails to meet the criteria of classic procrastination. It is either A, not really necessary, B, doesn't need to be done by any particular time, or C, wasn't given to you by your wife. For this to be really bifurcated procrastination, there is one other aspect that has to happen, and that is it doesn't start out as procrastination. The word bifurcate means split or divide and represents a change at some point in the process. So in the examples I'm about to share with you, I either started very proactively, very enthusiastically, or very aggressively, but at some point during the process, something changed. The whole process was bifurcated from the original phase to the procrastination phase. So let me walk you through a couple classic examples that I personally have experienced here on TNT. Now there's many examples from which I could have pulled, but the first one I'm going to share with you is the restoration of my daughter's mid-century modern fireplace. Very shortly after hauling this rusty bucket of bits and pieces of this mid-century fireplace home, uh, I aggressively got started with the uh, vaporized and the wire wheels, going to town, attacking the base, and starting this project in earnest. 
Now, I started it in May of 2021 and finished it in March of 2022. So overall, that was a 10 month period. Did I spend 10 months restoring the fireplace? Absolutely not. But at some point in that process, my enthusiasm and my vigor towards getting this completed was bifurcated and then transitioned into a procrastination phase. So another good example of bifurcated procrastination would be the stone walls that I built at the entrance of the TNT farm. Now, I really wanted to get that done. I had a little piece of fence, but two open gaps that I need filled so people couldn't drive around them and enter the property. So I started in earnest and uh, attacked it quite aggressively. Now I started that particular project in the month of October of 2021 and I just finished it up in December last week of 2022. So overall the stone wall took me 14 months beginning to end. Again, 14 months to build a stone wall? Absolutely not. Probably seven days worth of effort total over the course of over a year. But there's another example that somewhere along the way other priorities came into play and it bifurcated into a procrastination scenario. Now I'm going to share one last example with you. So for a final example of bifurcated procrastination, I'm going to share with you one that I wasn't quite as good at the procrastination side, but it has to do with the zip line we just recently completed out back of the barn here at TNT. So that one we actually started in June of 2022. I started clearing a path and the brush out of the way and had it completed in October of 2022. So it took me four months to build a 150 foot zip line behind the barn. Again, that was just a matter of days worth of effort, but other priorities came into play and it switched from something I wanted to get done immediately to something I procrastinated completing in the end. And that was the bifurcation point in this case happened to be the greenhouse. So how does this all tie back to the channel and the projects that I share with you? Well, I have two projects that I desperately want to get started. I really want to see completed, but from my experience, I know that if and when I start either one of these, there's a high likelihood that I will reach for whatever reason that point of bifurcation and these will transition into procrastination and take a really long time to actually complete. Now what I'm going to do is walk you through what those two project opportunities are. And this is the point in the video where I'm really looking for viewer participation. If you could share in the comments below which, if any, of these two projects you would like me to complete and share with you eventually on the program, just let me know. But I'm going to walk you out to the barn now and show you the two things I'm debating starting knowing that at some point I'll probably put them on pause and it'll take me a long time to actually finish. So here is project number one, another vintage corn sheller, but this one is a beast. If you haven't seen my previous video on restoring a early model corn sheller that uh, screws to a bench or a counter, go ahead and check that one out. But this thing weighs a ton. I actually used the uh, tractor to unload it from the trailer when I picked it up from the auction. Did get it extremely cheap, but components of this are going to require a complete rebuild. But that's one project I really want to do, but no, it's going to take me a significant amount of time to complete. Now let me show you the other project. So for this project, you're going to have to rely on my description of what I'm talking about because there's nothing here to see yet. At the end of the current build out, so that's the end of the interior build uh, from which we, we kicked off the video, to this particular column here, I want to build out my woodworking shop and have it temperature controlled, climate controlled, make it more comfortable to do projects. But as you can see, there are no walls. I do have doors. Uh, those are very old uh, doors I got from the Railroad Museum from LaGrange's uh, railway station here in Kentucky. 
But anyway, I digress. What I need to do is do the build out for the woodworking shop, starting with some interior walls and then the ceiling and then put in another mini split and then eventually uh, move in all of my tools that I use for my woodworking projects into that location. Now, even if I am very enthusiastic and aggressive to get started, I know this project's gonna take quite some time to finish, mostly because it's gonna be dependent on uh, some third-party contractors to do my electrical and HVAC, and also it's gonna cost me a pretty penny uh, to do the build out. But anyway, those are the two projects I have in mind that I wanna get started, but know will take me some time to complete. Let me know in the comments below which ones uh, you would prefer to see me at least start, and we'll go from there. Well, that's just about going to do it for another episode of Try New Things. I thank you, as always, for sticking with me through to the end. If you have a preference of one of those projects over the other, please feel free to leave that in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye-bye.